Hello and welcome to NGen Math 6 by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 3 on Division of Whole Numbers. Now, you've been doing division for a number of years and most of the division that we do today is going to be quite simple. But like everything that we do in this course, we want to make sure it's not just about memorizing facts. It's also about understanding what division means. So let's jump right into it. Right. Now, most of division, when you first learn it, is understood by understanding it as sort of the opposite, if you will, of multiplication. So let's take a look in exercise number one at that idea. Exercise one. Each of the following division problems results in a quotient that is a whole number. Now, all a quotient is, is the result of a division problem. That's it. Find the whole number and then write a multiplication sentence that justifies your answer. All right? So let's do the first one together. Letter A, 18 divided by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. All right? And the reason for that is very, very simple because 3 times 6 is equal to 18. Now, you can think about division, though, in sort of one of two ways. When you think about 18 divided by 3 and you get 6, well, sometimes people just say, oh, what, i got to multiply 3 by to get 6, and th that's fine. But division has a real meaning, right? 18 divided by 3, you can think of that either as, hey, if I had 18 cookies and three friends, how many cookies would each friend get? Well, they'd each get 6. Literally, I'm dividing up the 18 cookies. On the other hand, you could also say, hey, if I had 18 cookies and I wanted to put them in bags, each one of them holding three cookies, how many bags would I have? Well, in that case, I'd have six of them, right? So it's either how many times does three go into 18, or if I took 18 and broke it into three groups, how many things would be in each group? All right. What I'd like you to do is do letter B and letter C, including writing out the multiplication sentence, and then we'll come right back to it. Pause the video now and take a little bit of time. All right, 48 divided by six, well, that's equal to eight. Why? Because six times eight, or eight times six, either way, is 48, right? 63 divided by 9, well, that's equal to 7. Why? Because 7 times 9 is equal to 63, or vice versa. 9 times 7 is equal to 63. And again, every time, I want you to think about it definitely in terms of multiplication, but I also want you to think about that idea that, ah, 48 divided by 6, that's like saying, hey man, I take 48 kids and I'm going to divide them up into 6 groups. How many kids are in each group? 8 of them right? Or I've got 48 kids and I want to put them in groups of six kids each. How many groups do I have? I've got eight of them. Always make sure that you understand the meaning behind division, all right? Because division, even more than multiplication, addition, or subtraction, can get quite tricky for kids to think about. All right, let's keep going with a little division work. Now, just like whole number multiplication, you should feel pretty comfortable with division, especially when the quotients end up being whole numbers. That's the case in each one of these six problems. So in each one of these six problems, what I want you to do after you pause the video is come up with the whole number quotient for each one of these division problems. Pause the video now and think about them. All right. Very simply put, 28 divided by 4, well, that's equal to 7, right? 45 divided by 5, that's equal to 9. 36 divided by 6, that's equal to 6. 27 divided by 9, that's equal to 3. 120 divided by 10, that's equal to 12. And 56 divided by 8, that's equal to 7. And in each case, if you're thinking about it as, well, what would I have to multiply 4 by in order to get 28? Oh, I have to multiply it by 7. That's great, right? Because you're making that connection between division and multiplication. And that connection gets used 
all the time, right? We're gonna see it in the next problem as well. Let's move on to that problem. All right, exercise number three, a little bit of the meaning of division. A restaurant is making three egg omelets. Mm. If the restaurant has 24 eggs, how many omelets can it make? Letter A asks us to circle groups of three eggs to determine the answer. So do that, like literally come in and just be like, all right, well, okay, here's, here's an omelet, right? And here's an omelet, and here's an omelet, etc. right? Go ahead and do that, finish off the circling and whatnot to figure out how many three egg omelets they can make. Take just a moment to do that. All right, it's simple enough. We've got another omelet and another one, another one, another one, and another one. And of course we can count, and that's simply going to be eight of them. Now letter B says, write a division sentence that justifies your answer. Write a division sentence that justifies your answer. So a division sentence is just an equation, right? I want something divided by something equals eight. I think you can easily write that down, but pause the video for a second to give it a shot. All right, let's do it. It's simple as this. 24 divided by three is equal to eight. And again, this is that great interpretation of division where we're kind of trying to figure out how many threes fit inside of 24. Right, I've got groups that are all of size three, and I want to figure out how many groups there are. There's eight of them, okay? Now, unlike multiplication of whole numbers, addition of whole numbers, and most of the time subtraction of whole numbers, what results when you divide two whole numbers doesn't have to be another whole number. Oh, let's take a look at that in the next problem. But hey, it's a problem about pizza. Division with remainders, all right? So often when we divide two numbers, 24 divided by three, we get a whole number, eight. But sometimes we don't. And let's take a look at a classic situation. Exercise number four. A pizza has been cut into 16 slices as shown below. If five friends share the pizza equally, answer the following questions. A. How many whole slices will each person receive? All right. Well, let's just kind of let's just kind of think about this for a minute, right? We've got these five people, and they're trying to share 16 slices. Well, let's see. Um, they certainly would be able to get at least one slice each because that's just five. Um, if they got two slices each, that would be 10. And if they got three slices each, that would be 15. Now they can't get four slices each because that would be 20. And of course what I'm doing right now, right, is I'm going through multiples of five. And the closest multiple of five that is still less than the 16 slices I've got here is equal to 15. So each is gonna get, each will get three. And that's because, right, five times three is equal to 15, right? Now, letter B, how many slices will remain after the whole slices are given out? Well, that's pretty easy, right? We had 16 slices to begin with. If each person gets three slices each, right, then we've used up 15 of them, which means we just have one slice remaining. Letter C, says write a division sentence that summarizes what we found in A and B, write an equivalent multiplication sentence. So I wanna write out what we found in both A and B, right? And that's really what it, what's happening when I take 16 slices and I divide it up amongst five people. Well, what I get is 16 divided by five gives me three, with a remainder of one, right? So 16 divided by three is five, uh, sorry, 16 divided by five is three, but then I have one whole unit remaining. Now, how would I put that in terms of multiplication? Well, in terms of multiplication, what I would say is I would say that five times three 
plus an additional 1 would be equal to 16. There we go. Right? So this is kind of the, the whole number part, right? And this is our remainder. Now, letter D, just a little fraction work here. If the remainder, that remainder of one slice, was divided equally between five friends, how much of a slice of pizza would each of them get? Also, how much total pizza would each friend get? Well, I mean, there's only one piece remaining, and if it was divided evenly amongst all five of the friends, they would each get one-fifth of a slice. It would be a pretty thin slice, right? It would be one of those like super thin things that you could just kind of chuck into your mouth and eat in a single bite, right? Because it would be one-fifth of a slice of pizza. But in total, what the friends would get is they'd get those three slices and an additional one-fifth of a slice. Now, we're going to talk more about fractions and mixed numbers and improper fractions and all of that in the next unit. So let's not worry too much about this right now. Let's primarily worry, worry about division where we have a remainder left over. And let's get a little bit of practice on that in the last exercise. All right. Exercise number five. Find each of the following quotients. Express your answer as a whole number and a remainder. All right. So in every one of these problems, our result is not just a whole number. It's a whole number plus there's something that remains. All right, so let's talk about like 40 divided by 7 and how you'd want to think about that. A lot of students like to think about it kind of like this, right, with our division kind of symbolism. 40 divided by 7. And what we would do is we'd say, all right, well, like how many times does 7 go into 40? Well. 3 times 7 is 21, 4 times 7, 28, 5 times 7, 35, uh, 6 times 7, 42. Oh, that's too big, right? 6 is too big. But, but, but 5 isn't, right? So I could put a 5 up here, and that would give me 35. And when I subtract these two, I'd have a remainder of 5. So this one might be a bit confusing because 40 divided by 7 is 5, but then we have a remainder of 5 left over. 5 are 5. Let's do another one together. 22 divided by 3. Same idea, right? If I do 22 and I divide by 3, well, I know that 3 can go into 22 at least 7 times. Why do I know that? Because 7 times 3 is 21. So I write my 21 down, I subtract, and I have only one left over. And so, 22 divided by 3 is 7 r 1. All right? Let's have you pause the video now and try the rest of these on your own. And then we'll go through them. Take as much time as you need. All right. Let's go through them. All right, I'm going to do each one of them kind of like this. So, 50 divided by 9, right? I think to myself, ah, well, let's see, like 5 times 9 is 45. And we subtract, and we get a remainder of 5. So, just like in the first problem, we've got, ooh, we've got everything moving and doing funny things on me. We got 5R5. There we go. Let's take a look at 58 divided by 8. Hopefully we won't get 5R5 or any funkiness happening with our smart board. It wasn't so smart there, though. All right, 58 divided by 8. Well, 7 times 8 is close, right? It's 56, and that's going to leave us with a remainder of 2. So 58 divided by 8 is 7R2. 7 with a remainder of 2. Ah, 92 divided by 11. Well, we know that 8 times 11 would be 88. And then if we subtract, we find a remainder of 4. So 8 R 4. Let's do 80 divided by 9. Well, 9 times 9 is close. It's 81, but that's a bit too big. So it's going to have to be 9 times 8, which gives us 72, and gives us a remainder of 8. 8 R8. 
Let me pause just for a moment to make sure that you understand an important principle when it comes to remainders, right? <clears throat> you know, why didn't I have a seven here? You know, why didn't I have a seven or six there, right? So the point is the remainder should be smaller than what you're dividing by. Because if the remainder is equal to or larger than what you're dividing by, then you could have, divide, you could have had a larger quotient here, all right? So this number always has to be smaller than that number, or it simply can't be the remainder. There's just, there's more that can go in. All right, let's finish off the last three by raising up the board. All right, so 35 divided by 10. Well, 10 can go into 35 three times. That gives us a 30, and when we subtract, we have a remainder of five. So that's three R five. 51 divided by seven, well, seven times seven, that's 49, so that's pretty close. And when we subtract, we have a remainder of two. So 51 divided by seven is seven with a remainder of two. And finally, 37 divided by five, well, five can go into 37 seven times, right? Gives us 35 and also gives us a remainder of two. So same answers on those last two, 7R2 and 7R2. Sounds like a character out of Star Wars at this point. Um, so real simple, right? A lot of times when we divide, we do get whole numbers at our, as our answers, but sometimes we can get close, but still have remainders left over. And we're gonna, again, see the connection to fractions eventually, but for right now, just make sure you can do the division and identify the remainder. All right, let's wrap it up. Division is amazingly powerful. It's amazingly important, right? Division is literally, hey, if I have a certain amount of stuff and I divide it up into groups evenly, how much is in each group? Or if I have a certain amount of stuff and I wanna put it in groups that holds a certain amount, how many of those groups do I have? Now, sometimes when I take a whole number and divide it by another whole number, a whole number results, and sometimes what ends up happening is we have a remainder. All right, make sure to work on these skills on the homework set. Very, very important that you nail these down before we move on. Let me just thank you for joining me, Kirk Weiler, for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. Until next time, my kiddos, keep thinking and keep solving problems.